good good evening to one and all present here and welcome to medicine insight 2.0 session and uh, today our speakers will be dr priya ramnani and dr fagun shah uh, dr priya ramnani is an alumni of uh, G gea and uh, as uh, aspiring doctor she had also uh, done an mbbs from zhengzhou university in china where she actually won two merit based scholarships other than that uh, she's currently uh, interning at nanavati hospital and she aims to work at unicef in the future dr uh, fagun shah dr fagun shah is uh, currently interning at tnmc and during her undergraduate years she was actively involved in many many uh, academic activities including posters symposiums research studies and a few of them have even been published in international journals so we are incredibly happy to have both of you on board so over to you thank you so thank much you. um so hello everybody thank you so much for this opportunity for you know allowing me to speak with you all uh, in the insight 2.0 i am dr priya ramnani and i'm an mbbs graduate from jengjo university china and i completed my 10th in 2013 and my 12th isc in 2015 post which i went to china to complete my mbbs and now i'm currently working at nanavati hospital mumbai since january 2021 in today's event i'll be speaking about my career journey through mbbs abroad and the opportunities of studying abroad and how to go about the process while uh, i'll let my co intern uh, dr fagun shah speak about herself as well thank you hi thank you all for taking time out on a sunday evening to listen to us uh, i started my internship just 3 months ago I'm interning at Nile Hospital in Bombay Central. It is one of the five government hospitals in Bombay right now. Uh, I finished my MBBS over there, and I took my Plan One exam, which is the licensing exam to work in the UK. And I plan to uh, move to UK in the next year, approximately around uh, August 2022. So, thank you for the opportunity, uh, Insight 2.0 team. Thank all right so moving on so we will begin with the entire session right now so the first question that everyone normally gets in their mind is what exactly is involved in the course of mbbs so if you could please enlighten us about that in detail sure definitely so since uh, i have already told you all that i studied mbbs from china so in china the course is 6 years 5 years of mbbs education and one year of an internship which could be compulsory depending on the university where you study or you could even do your internship in india and mbbs abroad is uh 5 years uh, subjects are around 25 subjects basically 19 subjects of what you study in india they are divided over a period of 5 years and they give it to you as 25 subjects to study three years are preclinical subjects and the fourth and fifth year are all uh, para, uh all clinical subjects that involve gynecology pediatrics medicine surgery psychiatry dermatology etc so that's how about uh, that's how it goes in uh, china or any other country that you study like russia mauritius or philippines okay uh, so if i had to give you a comparison in india so first year is all about anatomy physiology and biochemistry so what comprises is uh, you know if you heard about dissection rooms and you know cutting open dead bodies is that what that's what happens in first year in fact on your very first day you'll be taken to a dissection hall and you'll be cutting open dead bodies so that's pretty interesting to start off it's like a very you start on a high i feel second year is all about pricking your fingers examining your own blood peeing in a champagne glass and examining your own pee which is biochemistry and pathology and pharmacology these are all pre clinical subjects uh, patho could be called a para clinical subject after which you get subjects which you actually heard of like ent of thal another another thing you might have not heard of is psm these are third year subjects and final year has a lot of subjects it has medicine surgery obgyn pediatrics dermatology psychology radiology and or so these are like uh, dr priya said these are 19 subjects spread over a course of 4.5 years over here uh and we have one year of compulsory internship also happen you don't have a choice and that's what i am doing right now i am in that last year of compulsory internship again where you rotate in all departments like i've finished medicine surgery radiology psych etc so far currently i'm rotating in all profession 
सो यू एक्चुअली गेट एन इंसाइट इन टू हाउ योर हॉस्पिटल वर्क स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम पेपर कैसे बनाना है फाइल कैसे लगाना है वॉट इन्वेस्टिगेशन टू रन इट इज वेरी वेरी फैसिनेटिंग एवरी डे ब्रिंग्स इन न्यू चैलेंज एंड यूर वेरी वेरी इन्वॉल्व लाइक इट सो फैसिनेटिंग वॉट यू लर्न इन योर फोर पॉइंट फाइव ईयर्स बिफोर यू सी ऑल ऑफ इट कम टूगेदर Uh, in the words like i call the words as walking talking textbooks every patient is what you exactly read in the textbook for the last four and a half years of course in the years before also you spend uh, about 3 hours a day in the hospital but what happens in internship it's like you know coming to a full circle so i find it very fascinating i agree with everything that dr fago <laughs> says here every day is every day gets you something new to learn some things that you must have not heard of some things that you're so well aware of what you've read throughout 5 years of your life and it's really interesting when you get into this field when you have hands on to treat every single patient because every single patient that you deal with has faith in you so you should have faith in yourself also <laughs> very well said very true as well so uh, entering into mbbs it's one of the biggest exams right neat and right. it's got like 15000 15 lakh students appearing every year so it's and kind of like a hard one yeah keeps on increasing so could you tell us more about it dr mm-hmm. fagun of course so uh, in the indian medical system you write an exam at every step to get into mbbs you write the neat ug after finishing mbbs if you want to continue studying over here as a post graduate you take the neat pg after which if you want to do super specialty you take neat ss these are three types of neats at your level let's speak about neat ug which gets you into medicine so uh, this is a multiple choice question and uh, what sets it apart or what sets the difficulty of this exam is how it tests your accuracy in a very time sensitive manner if i give you 6 hours all of you will get most of the questions correct but to get those questions correct in 3 hours is where the challenge lies is where most people find it a little uh, challenging or uh, it becomes a task over there because it's time uh, sensitive so that's about like the overview of the exam like we know there are three subjects biology physics chemistry and what i have seen across the board is that most of us get into medicine because we like bio and most of us and that's why not very good at physics and chem so mm. i think physics is one of the most challenging subjects when it comes to neat ug and the easiest way to tackle it is to take math I think in eleventh I took math, which was optional. But since I was so good at calculus part of it, the integration derivation part of it, my physics became very very easy because you will have some part of maths. Of course, it's not compulsory, but it made uh, it it made my job very easy, and I was better at physics than I was at bio. So I think that is one tip I would give you there, and uh, that's one. Apart from that, uh, I think there was one of the questions which I was asked, which is the best uh, board to take up uh, in high school. I would one hundred percent recommend CBSE for two reasons. True. It is it is a very good balance of scoring and how easy the syllabus is. I can assure you, if you are going to crack NEET, you are going to score about ninety in your CBSE. So that ninety percent, that you you know that all of us that coveted score of ninety plus, we get that if you take CBSE. and secondly neat is primarily based on ncert they have a rule that 40 to 60% of the questions have to be from the ncert for the uh, for those of you who don't know ncert is a government uh, recognized textbook in fact formulated by the government for high school cbse high school i wish i had my textbook to show you all because every line written in that textbook is the gospel truth you have to know that textbook inside out even the smallest line written just below the diagram saying this is the evolution of from monkey to man whatever it says you have to know it so that's yes. how you start so i feel for these two is scoring and the syllabus part i feel cbse is amazing another thing that comes with taking cbse is that you are in a school environment cbse high school is a school it's not your junior college so being in this environment you are very very sincere and that whole environment is very conducive for you to study focus and get that rank that you really uh, have to get to get into a good government college and apart from that uh, i can we move on to the next slide sadhana ji yeah so uh, these are the facts you will get on the uh, website but uh, yeah yeah so one uh, 80 questions i feel at this point of time anybody who need has to get into a government college has to get most of the biology questions correct 
and the one way to do that is uh, know your ncrt inside out pit and pat every line every comma every full stop apart from that most of you all have to join our class that i wouldn't recommend uh, just self study you have to have some direction so and you know the competitive environment um, the guidance of experts i think classes are absolutely necessary so once you go into classes they have their own modules and they have extra information you have to your for that like the first reading should involve putting those extra things into your ncrt ncrt should not go away from you it should it has to be within 1 meter parameter at any given point in your 11th and 12th so put all those extra points in your ncrt and when you do your first read it should be basically just reading and understanding don't even try to memorize at that point just read and understand where it comes from if it's talking about hypothyroidism and if it's saying uh say weight gain you have to know why there is weight gain because of bmi okay so just read and understand don't try to memorize memorizing is a second step when it comes to study i feel whenever we are doing things like mbbs or even getting into mbbs knowing the art of studying is very important so that's why i would always recommend start with reading and understanding then go on to memorize and the third step would be revising and filling in the lacunae of the things you forgotten so i think if you take this approach i think uh, neat wouldn't be very difficult for you and one of the golden lines my mentor had taught me during my high school was make as many mistakes as you can during your mocks during all your class tests etc but once you make a mistake make sure you never ever repeat it again so you know you make those mistakes but after the test you have to go deep into it know it know it inside out and never ever make the same mistake again when you do this by the end of the you know your two year course you will know everything so this is like a very straightforward way of going about things do you i think we should move ahead in the next yeah, slide yeah. so yeah this is just a break up they do not always uh, like section a and b is just i think um, division of sub topics which we did not have an i took the exam irrespective it doesn't matter where you score you just have to score whatever you get out of 720 whether you score full in physics or chemistry or bot botany or zoology doesn't really make a lot of difference just get that score when i was taking the exam 550 plus used to be like a topper score i don't think that's true anymore because the cutoffs are only increasing so competition is only going to rise but i think you all are also getting way smarter than what we were so it's all good if i remember correctly last year in neat there was the someone even got a perfect score like 720 yeah, or yeah, 720 yeah. It's, yeah, it's incredible. I find it in incredible to believe that. <clears throat> so this is the cut off. Uh, then people normally have a lot of questions about the quota system and how it exactly plays into getting into a government college as a whole. And so, if you could please shed a little more light into it. Yeah. So uh, as of now, we have less than fifty percent of the seats. It says fifty percent, but. you know when you do all that math of 50% of this and this and that you know a lot of things come into play you do not have exactly 50% you have fewer seats than that but that's about it i mean i don't think we need to get into just know the number of seats you have just know in fact rather than chasing marks chase the rank like you need to know that uh, if i rank within the first i think my rank i don't even remember my rank but i think if you rank within the first 500 in your state I never targeted all India colleges. My target was KM, Naya, Sain, Cooper, JJ. So for these colleges, all of them have approximately hundred seats for general category, approximately. So Naya has one twenty seats, out of which we get around eighty. JJ has two hundred seats, so they get around hundred. Just think about it as hundred seats, and if you are within the first four hundred, you are getting in the uh, getting the government seat in Mumbai. Then you have a lot of. Every year, an increasing number of colleges and number of seats. Like when I started off, Sain had hundred. Now they have one fifty. I think KM was at one eighty, and I think they've also gone up uh, to two hundred or something like that. So seats are increasing. Of course, not exponentially. The way number of applicants are increasing. But uh, so for that, you know, always uh, focus on one classes. Suppose if you're going to Akash, take Ellen's class a uh, test. So you know where your rank lies in both sets of students because. There are both of them will cater to different students. Focus only one study material, but always take another test series. Say if you're going to mind setters, take Akash's test series. Have one additional backup so you know where you lie because rank is more important. If the paper stuff cut off is going to fall, 
but rank will always remain the same because the number of seats always remain same apart from that it really doesn't matter who has how many because we whichever category we fall into we only have those many seats so there's no point discussing and losing sleep over this i think very true very true uh, dr priya uh, would you shed some light about your experience with neat as well so uh, when i give i didn't even give the neat i gave the aipmt in 2015 not only the aipmt i also gave the comet k which i believe is for karnataka and the bharti vidya peet examination i think yeah i think i gave manipal institute examination as well so yeah aipmt was pretty much the same as neat ug uh, i clearly don't remember my rank and i am 100% sure i didn't even get a seat in mbbs so that's why i chose abroad because for me Uh, per se i didn't understand the quota system that you have in the country so i chose abroad because it made it much easier through the percentage that i got and i got a good admission in a good college in china so yeah great great so uh, before we move forward is it okay if we entertain a few uh, questions from the audience definitely well? definitely so, definitely audience members feel free to put your questions in the chat box or even if you want to unmute yourself and ask your questions uh so uh, as dr priya said that uh, she uh, went in uh, went for abroad so uh, if you, uh, so are you like uh, cu- currently uh, practicing uh, in india or continuing abroad yes i am currently interning in india it missed the pandemic otherwise i would have done my internship in china and i would have been working as a medical officer right now in the country i personally need an experience of 2 to 3 years before i settle abroad for me currently i don't have any intentions of staying in india but in case i do i'm already looking out for my options and also preparing for neat pg just in case okay so like if you have to uh, transfer back over here so you must have uh, you know had to give some exam or something yes we have a license exam and uh, i'll be sitting on the license exam uh, sorry you got you got about the license exam Yeah, I'm so sorry about my internet. It's acting a little weird. <laughs> so uh-huh. we have an yeah. exam called the Foreign Graduate Medical Exam, which you give after your five years of MBBS course from whichever country you study. Okay. Yeah. So I'll be speaking about that in a while. But I uh, this saw is... a question in the chat box asking. Yeah. Um, If we don't get the desired marks in NEET, is it advisable to take a drop? you know what i feel if you're thinking of taking another career always take another career you know if yeah. you think mbbs is an option for you do not take it so and i and you know of course i've seen a lot of success when it comes to drop years but it is also very 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 challenging because every year competition increases one year you are alone at home battling your failures so if you have that drive and that fire in your belly go ahead by all means But if you're already okay taking another career, please go ahead. And will extra coaching? Cl- what do you mean by extra coaching classes? Like coaching classes, right? Two coaching classes. I think Shruti asked this question. Shruti, could you elaborate? Uh, Shruti, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, speak as well. For NEET 2022, there are almost eight to nine months left, and due to this pandemic, most of us have not not studied. How to not manage? After- How would you manage? <laughs> I think see, well, eight to nine months is a fair amount of time. Yeah. If you really okay. start very minute, and uh, you know, I used to maintain these timetables, but I used to write that from eight to nine, I did not study. Nine to eleven, mm. I read physics. Then I was watching TV. And I used to review it at the end of a week, and I used to always realize that okay, mornings I don't like to study, or evenings I always lose track. So I used to not punish myself and say, okay, fine, you don't like studying in the evenings, no? Let's go to sleep rather than pretending to study. Let's not study when we don't feel like studying, and let's capitalize on the time when we feel like studying. So be nice, be smart, be tactful, and nine months is a very good amount of time for you to crack it. You don't have to get seven twenty. You just need that one seat, and for that one seat. Target a realistic score. If it's not earlier, so one seat. We don't want all seats, na. If you need to have thousands of seats, you want one seat. Utne re target karo, wo mil jaye. 
बट स्टडी वेल यू कॉन्ट बी लाइक नहीं पढ़ा अब क्या करूँ एवरी टाइम यू कॉन्ट डांस दैट अभी तक नहीं पढ़ा कितने हो गया फ्रॉम टूडे ऑनवर्ड डोंट डू दैट एंड बी माइंड फुल यू नो आई ऑलवेज सेल माई सेल्फ स्टार्ट बाई डूइंग वट्स नेसेसरी देन ट्राई टू डू वट्स पॉसिबल एंड सडनली यूल रियलाइज so always start by okay necessary ncert what can i do read from my modules and then you don't like impossible is getting a seat after not studying in level uh if we do our graduate i think that's for you priya the next question yeah i have if we do our graduation and want to do our pg no, you're asking me pg or masters abroad yes 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 also i So, so does my bachelor's a... degree count there? Of course, it does. Yeah. Hello. So I was thinking our uh, our audience is way junior, uh, way too young to be thinking about postgraduate. But yes, definitely you can take up US, UK, Canada, Australia. These four countries, I do know that they accept our uh, like Dr. Priya is going to go to thinking of going to US. I am in the process of moving to UK, and Australia has the same procedure as going to uh, UK. And Canada also similar, but I know UK and Australia is the same. Of course, so many people are going to US. Of course, MBBS is valid. Do not do residency over here. If you are thinking of moving abroad, go after MBBS. Do not do residency and then think of moving. By residency, yes. I mean uh, masters, as you all call it, or MD or MS. Don't do it over here. Um, uh, ask me, ask. I like biology, but I cannot root learn. Is it necessary? Not at all. Like I said, first step is to always read and understand. Memorizing is later. When I always know where, where something is coming from. So even till date, if I start studying something new, I take a lot of time to just marinate the topic. You know, I let my brain cells just you know somewhere just marinate in the topic. And okay, where is it starting from? And you can start by drawing. You can start by visualizing. You don't need to wrote down. And sometimes, what your eyes see, what your mind already knows. So if you understood the concept. You don't really need to do rote learn what you're seeing. Your mind already knows; it gets it. So the second step is memorizing becomes way easier. Just understand the concept very well. Do not try to memorize the first time you read something. That's not the way to go about it. Yeah. Uh, there's a question by Akansha Patra. Is there uh, something known as X, X number of hours that we need to study? So, what is the minimum number of hours in the best time of studying? i can speak from my experience that minimum number of hours is in a day that you need minimum is just 3 to 4 hours understand a topic read it and like dr fagun said revise it memorize it later you need to do it in a process of 3 to 4 steps till you remember it crisp and clear yeah so <laughs> there is nothing like you have to you know harm your sleep cycle and crack neat no 8 hours of sleep harm your sleep cycle please It is you compulsory know, eight hours of sleep. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I had made a rule for myself, starting from my UG days till now, that sleep more than you study, study more True. than you party, party as much as you can. So if you yes. have this balance right, I don't think you're going to stray off any time in your life. Not just pre uh, pre MBBS, MBBS, post MBBS. Just keep keep have a few fundas clear in your head, and it's not too much of a rocket science over here. uh dev ke mehta is asking i do not want to become a doctor but i want to have a i want to have medical research so what are the options uh not become a doctor but medical research i think uh, doing bsc at uh, iisc has very good courses in bangalore bangalore right indian institute of science has very good yes. courses for medical research i have taken biotechnology how can, you've taken biotechnology in your 11th and 12th i'm assuming how can i do bsc in biotech and further study just just do that do bsc in biotech there are multiple mm. college offering those uh, uh, that option but that i as far as i know i could be wrong over here it does not go via aip mt neat or any of the entrance exams it goes via your 12th standard board yes. exam so make yes. sure you have a reference for but this is as far as i know i could be wrong uh, please look this up and options abroad are incredibly good for biotechnology if you all know one of my very very beloved teachers from gundecha uh, minakshi ma'am has a lot of experience when it comes to biotechnology uh, if you are can get in touch with her she'd be an amazing mentor to speak to so yeah but biotechnology i know scope biotechnology and biomedical are two upcoming fields biomedical is uh, you know dealing with pacemakers and uh, devices related to medicine and biotech is more uh, tech is more about genetics you know how we read those 
gm mangoes genetically modified mangoes like sweetened and enhanced so it's about going splicing your gene genome making it better that's all i know about it and i have only read two chapters in my high school so that's all i can help you with in biotech uh there's a question by uh, gia which is the best country for studying medicine <laughs> well i believe like every country is good in their own way because they have their own set of thoughts to uh, to teach their students like i did from china i have many friends who've done it from russia and mauritius so everywhere it's like they have different techniques of teaching their students and i believe india is also a great place to study mbbs if you're really passionate about it any place that you go wouldn't really matter so sure. i think that's about it have oh there are more yeah. after training a degree of mbbs would it be viable to go abroad uh, best places in asia uh, ananya i wouldn't be the right person to tell you what places in asia i think it's so this is if you want to study mbbs in india and then go abroad for practicing the best places in asia i think one of the good places that you can go is uh, uae really really good place it gives you everything that you would have asked for you know good settlement and uh, good opportunities to work there so that's a very good place since i've stayed over there for quite many years i i can speak for that but other countries maybe not china china if you do your mbbs from india and go to china for example then you need to clear their license exam which is in mandarin if you go to russia then also i believe there they have their language exam and then their license exams so if you plan to study mbbs in india and then go abroad you need to study the language beforehand to crack their exams and then you it's easier for you to even deal with the patients out there especially if you go to countries like this so yeah that's about it <laughs> tanya asks is it necessary to reduce your entertainment and relaxation time in order to crack neat yes i think you can't be uh, you know always uh, indulging yourself in what i feel like you have to be disciplined everybody wants what you want everybody wants that one coveted seat so you can't be chilling for uh, x number of hours and then expect you to because you know while you're making merry other people are studying so definitely please reduce on your entertainment and relaxation but by that i don't mean burn yourself be have a sustainable study plan which you can which can go on till your last day of uh, exam Best college, uh, KM comes at number one. Naya Sand comes at number two. Uh, J J J J J Cooper, five colleges like this. Like KM is number one undoubtedly, but a lot of people have passion for J J because J J is one of the oldest colleges. So yes. either at the last, like I put J J fifth, but some people have put J J at number one. And my preference was KM, Naya, Sand, Cooper, J J, and I feel Sand, uh, Naya are like. equally good just depends on where you live if you are living on the western line go for nair if central then go for sai okay uh, again across yeah uh, yeah my dream is to get into aims which has believed is difficult what are your thoughts to get into a government college and why is it preferred by students and their families dream is uh, to get into aims okay yeah sorry sorry to interrupt No, no, please. I want you only to speak on that since you've already done it in a government college. It would be more helpful if you explain to them. I think AIMS cannot be your uh, plan A. You, it should be your backup plan because, however intelligent you may be, it's not a very transparent exam in the terms that you don't know what score to target. It's all very vague. Like you know, they don't re really release mark lists. Like the last year's toppers score is always a speculation based on you know what other. Uh, websites have come up with they never release what score what who so i think aims of course try for it by all means but for people like me like i count myself as uh, an above average student who works more on the basis of hard work and talent and i wouldn't have thought of getting into aims not realistic for me i have yeah. incredibly intelligent friends who i felt were uh, proper aims material but they've not gotten it even at new neat ug they didn't get in neat pg also they didn't get in so aims is a very a non reliable exam to get in it is outstanding it is number 1 for a reason but it cannot be your soul and soul and it is it is undoubtedly very difficult uh, thoughts on government college I, from my experience and i have spoken to a lot of friends in private dean government college 
it is number one government college i tell you why the plethora of patients that we get in my ward you will not see it in private 100 percent because we have patients so many patients on beds we have patient on the floor we have patient outside the ward there are patients inside the ward there are patients that's why i'm calling it a walking talking textbook because every case that is there in the textbook is there in my ward so what i see is what i what i read is what i see this is not what you will see in private number one in private people pay and come they expect a sense of luxury they expect a sense of uh, they expect some sort of fluffy behavior from you government poor people are coming they know they can't afford anything they have to come to you you get a full free reign to try as many examinations on them they are more yes. welcoming of you so mm -hmm. uh, the hands on experience that you get i mean imagine you going to a hospital and if some somebody as newbie as me and comes and says okay i'll do your lumbar puncture today you will not allow me but in my <laughs> hospital they do not have they do not know that there is an option to say no so i get True. to learn what i can do so for I, as I, a I, student and as to learn trust me government college the crowd the teachers if you are getting into government college you have you don't have to think about not going over there if you are getting a government seat by all means please take it if one is not competitive uh, i think priya do you want to say something about yeah, this yeah no i just want to i agree to dr fagun's point cuz she has hands on experience of working in a government hospital while i have experience of only working in a private setup so when you, if you get a government college in india there is nothing like it because once you get a government college here you have every experience that you would have want you would want like really as a medical student you would want to take the experience out from a government hospital than a private setup uh, i think priya she should an next question from jumana mm -hmm. yeah i just saw that i think i just missed it yeah if one is not competitive and consistent but passionate for a subject is it advisable to go for medicine as a career uh if you are extremely passionate about it you should go for it there's nothing that's going to stop you from your passion like for example i'll give a very realistic example out here i wasn't good at physics i didn't even clear my 11th grade physics i was really poor in physics i didn't even choose maths as a subject in my 9th grade i studied in icsc and we had an option of dropping out maths and that's what i did so literally if you can put in hard work extra number of hours there's nothing that's going to stop you to do medicine that's what i did for 5 years you cannot compare yourself to anybody else and say ki he's more intelligent or this person is doing you know bahut zyada mehnat kar raha hai wo you are equally at par with them but you just don't know your talent once you know that you can do this there's nothing that's going to stop you from getting into mbbs and pursuing it as your career as i said whether you do it from india whether you do it from abroad as long as you have have the knowledge and uh, the power the will of doing it nothing is going to stop very true uh i think we'll take one last question before we go forward with the presentation sure so sure the, uh i think sohani just raised her hand mhm so uh, sohani do you want to unmute and ask a question yeah i wanted to ask that uh, so even i took uh, bio because uh, after 10th uh, i wanted to go for science so i took uh, in maths and science uh, in ma in science obviously maths and biology so like uh, maths was something i wouldn't go for so i took biology and somewhere i was interested into medicine medicine but then uh, i'm not sure if i want to really do uh, mbbs as a thing uh so now if after 12 uh, if i want to switch some options because currently i am studying for neat so what are the options that i can go for and if uh, i am looking for uh, studying abroad because in uh, because i have a pr of singapore as well so what uh, could benefit me in that sense i think so, uh, b farm would be a great option for you apart from biotech biomed b farm is great and upcoming and if you really like office hours do b farm it's amazing and then do an mba and you will be sorted for life and it's easier to work in singapore when you have b farm i i assume nus which is the harvard of asia does take yeah. our students for b farm so look up those things so i can give you more options after mba like if you don't like clinical after mba what to do i can give you those options because those are the options i have explored but 
uh, pharmacy is a good option biotechnology is an amazing option apart from that you oh. have physical dentistry uh, speech therapy audio therapy uh, radiology technician those are the jobs but i would honestly recommend from what i have heard and i have seen in my hospital that be pharm and biotech are good options better options options than the rest of course i'm assuming you don't want to do physiotherapy or dentistry yeah but if i'm uh, more interested into say health and fitness uh, and maybe cosmetology something then like that then why don't you bsc uh-huh. and just pick up food and nutrition and then go on to become a dietitian go, do a f- few correspondence courses and you're sorted i think pooja makhija or rujita if you've heard of these dietitians yeah 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 do bsc msc in food and nutrition become a dietitian become a nutritionist and you're sorted right okay thank you uh there's a question for me uh by asmi dr priya have you uh, had you already decided to go abroad uh well no i didn't my initial plan when i was in my 12th 11th grade i thought i would study in india but of course there's a lot of competition and as i already said i didn't get through mbbs but i got through other courses like bds physiotherapy ayurvedic and homeopathy and in manipal institute i got for pharm- pharmacology pharmacy so abroad was kind of a last minute decision but i would not regret that decision for anything because it gave me everything that i have wanted in my life and that's why i'm here today <laughs> so about ib i don't have much idea about ib and ib would be good for probably those who already have plans of studying in a country maybe like us and uk from 12th grade itself like after you finish your 12th grade i believe like in the us especially like you go and do a bsc degree first and then after that you apply for medical courses out there so ib would be better if you do that and go to us if i'm not wrong Uh, so, basically, do you want us to take more questions, or should we take them later on? We'll take a pause for the questions okay. over here, and we'll just continue for us, so they'll get to know more. A lot of the questions will be answered through the slide PPT right. flow as well. So, so. Uh, these are the top medical colleges in India. Of course, you know you should not stick to this. Of course, AIMS does remain uh, numero like number one forever. But you know, a lot of these things which don't matter to us go into these rankings, like. Uh, how many exchange students do you have how many researches are conducted in your super specialty now as a ug what do i care about super specialty research but the ranking are based on that so like i said five colleges of uh, bombay and if you get a rank i don't think you will need these rank lists you will know by then so i think don't get too hassled by be it a quota system or by ranking of colleges right now first study take the exam you will have enough number of hours and days to dis- decide your college after your rank so do not spend time doing all this i think we did this yeah yeah because mm-hmm. solving past time. papers past papers is a gold mine you have to and have to solve past papers and back in the day when i took the exam i used to solve uh, j w and i p m t questions for uh, physics now those are a step above our level but if you can crack those there's no way you will not crack me so i used to write a lot of those uh, for physics and chem i used to solve uh, jwe aip mt which classes see i think my knowledge over here is a little redundant it's been 7 years since i took the test not 7 5 years i think since i took the test and i think all of them are good but like i said just stick to one and then join another one just for test series and i think you will have a very comprehensive view when it comes to study time allocation like i said as much as you can give the more the better I, i am of that opinion that chilling can wait after 2 years mbbs will allow you to chill like you've never chilled before so for 2 years don't chill too much just focus on your mental health physical health and give rest of the time to study can i do this oh of course so we would like uh, now for mbbs abroad now we saw a lot of questions that came to pursuing mbbs abroad there were a lot of uh, participants as well who were very inclined towards mbbs in foreign countries so uh, dr priya ramnani she's completed her uh, mbbs from zhengzhou university in china so would you like to please uh, give us an insight into more about yeah. mbbs abroad definitely so like i said already that uh, mbbs 
abroad was like an end moment decision, but I wouldn't regret it. So basically, uh, like you can see on your screens, this is how it goes about. And uh, to go abroad, you uh, have yearly fairs that happen across Mumbai throughout the year, usually between the months of September, October, November. You can see those fairs through news ads or maybe Instagram ads. There are a lot of fairs that happen. And if you go to them, then you can check out like what are the courses that you can offer abroad. Like even if you do not want to do MBBS, something related to the medical field, you have courses for that. Example, paramedics, lab technicians, and uh, many more. So once you decide that you want to go abroad, NEET is compulsory. NEET UG is uh, what I mean. 50% you have to get in that to even study abroad as the guidelines of the government state, right? So once you're done with that, or maybe even beforehand, you start looking out for colleges online. And uh, after you finish your 12, once you get your certificates in hand, you apply uh, through the online process. You send in your applications. Uh, you send in your applications and uh, you wait for their reply. If they accept you, uh, if they accept you, then you get to a merit base. You will require your 10th, 11th, 12th documents, your bank statements, the finance, who's going to be financing you. Like usually we do not have scholarships that happen from our place. But if like you study abroad later on in life, the government pays for your, uh, for your education as well. You will also require a visa and you will require the um, admission certificate from your college as well when you join abroad. And like for English, there is not there's no requirement for giving the TOEFL or IELTS. If you have 60% in English, then you're exempted from even giving those exams to pursue MBBS abroad. Post MBBS, you have something known as the foreign medical graduate exam. You clear that as per the new guidelines of the National Medical Council, which is also known as the NMC. There are only three attempts that you can give for the exam. Earlier, there were ample number of attempts, but now it's reduced to three. So you clear that and then you can apply for your license in India to practice or to even do an internship. Oh. Can everybody hear me? Because I'm so sorry about my internet. It's uh, acting a little weird today. Yeah, so you were audible. You were audible. You were audible. <laughs> okay. So uh, for the... Uh... MBBS abroad, we got a question from Tanishka. Is it better to do MBBS or post MBBS abroad? Is it better to do MBBS or post MBBS abroad? Post graduation. Uh, do you mean by post MBBS, you mean PG, right? Yeah, yeah, post MBBS, PG. So since I'm already, I've already applied, uh, taken the USMLE, which is like the US medical license examination step one. Uh, I personally believe that both the sides is hard work, whether you do your MBBS uh, and post MBBS in India or you do it abroad, you still have a number of exams that you need to give before getting admission elsewhere. And about UK, uh, Dr. Fagon can speak better for that because she's taken the exam and she has more experience with it. I think when they ask about what is better, I don't think there is something called better. Whatever works for you. If you ask me, I'll say, oh, MBBS in India is the best. If you ask Dr. Priya, she'll say, MBBS in China was the most cherishable experience of her life. So, you know, there is no one set method of going about these things. You have to be uh, passionate about medicine. Medicine remains same across borders, irrespective. So, it see how it plays out. You can't really decide on every step of your life. If you get in sometimes, you pursue over here. It was a chance event for Dr. Priya and she's really liking her experience so far. So you can't really decide, okay, this is better. I'll go over there. Take the exam, see how the, see what is the course of your life. Some things are best left to fade, but you have to take the exam. Like she said, you have to write the need. Write the need, see where you lie with your score and then take a call whether you want to go right now, you want to go after your MBBS. I felt going after MBBS was a good call for me. So that's what I'm doing right now. 
I agree to what Dr. Fagun says. It's at the end of the day, your decision. Uh, and just go with the flow. Don't yeah. say that I have to do this either and if I don't do this, I won't be able to do anything in my life. You know? It's just like that. I think this is a good question, Priya, for you. Is there any added is advantage there any... of doing... Added advantage of doing MBBS abroad? Yeah. So I agree on this a lot <laughs> because um, you get to learn the language, which is the biggest advantage you can have. Like, for example, uh, Mandarin is one of the toughest language in today's date. And I know the language. I've cleared the exam, which is compulsory in China. And uh, you have diversity of students. So you have a lot of students from different parts of the world coming in at one place, studying the same thing like you. And, they ex uh, and you get experience of how MBBS or how the structure of their hospital is outside the country, outside India, I mean. So, you know, maybe you can bring those technologies in India and make this place also better by, you know, setting up a better hospital over here for everybody. And I mean, even if I don't think in those very noble terms, I feel, aren't you really thirsty for newer experiences? Like, medicine is a part of your life imagine going somewhere and getting to experience a new lifestyle and getting to do uh, mbbs i think it's a that is the biggest advantage if you have to ask in terms of advantage or disadvantage but apart from that i do not think uh, like you know i think what they were asking was very objectively that if you do it in china do you have an edge over indian students or if i if i do it in india do i have an edge over china students yeah, like, like you know um in terms of the kind of education that you get and or you know i mean as a doctor, will will there be any other special advantages that you see if you know you you studied from a, another country and not India, or do Indian students mm -hmm. have an edge in India? Like if like Priya, if you were practicing over here after studying from China, if you've come here, can so... I tell you how I think Indian students have an edge when I see? So you know, diseases are always uh, very yeah, concentrated. Yeah, yeah. Like see, some things are more seen in Caucasian population. Something is more prevalent in Af Afro American. So when you think on those lines, if I'm practicing in India, I need to have studied over like something like cholera typhoid does not exist in the US, but it only exists over here. So if I'm here, I'll see those patients and I'll know how to treat those patients in my in the course of my practice. Mm -hmm. But uh, like a TB is a very big deal in the US. We still do very redundant tests like Montu's test, which is which we don't do over here so much. Why? Because TB is so prevalent. So sometimes the management and the thought of uh, the process, the thought process changes according to country. So it's better to study where you uh, decide on deciding. I think. Hmm. Okay. There's no advantage as such if you study MBBS abroad. Yeah, of course, it opens your mind to many other opportunities that you could get, which might not be in India. Okay, hmm. and uh, studying MBBS uh, in China just gave me the opportunity to mingle around with other foreign nationalities and the type of technology that they use in their country. So that's a new experience to learn altogether. There are some things that I've seen out there, which I still did, do not see that here, but I'm sure in the upcoming years and in the future, there will be everything that you want from abroad in India. Right, right. I think technology, what you mean is the edge that you all have over uh, India yeah. in terms of technology and resources. Makes sense. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Matanji. So moving on over here. So in the end, why medicine as a whole? Like we understand that the family ka pressure aata hai. And not only that, there's uh, it's a noble pro profession. So what were your own personal reasons to select medicine? Priya, do you want to go first? Yeah. Uh, so for me, uh, I felt this is a noble profession, but imagine I am having fun. I am doing this not because it's noble or to help. Like for me, because when you take the pressure of, okay, I'm doing this to help people and I am uh, at service to mankind, it is, I don't think my shoulders can take that. So my whole approach was, oh my God, I get to have fun and serve somebody as a byproduct. Like every time I am just existing in the hospital, I'm helping somebody just, just by the virtue of my existence, which is like a superpower. It felt like a very, uh, like it felt like an idea I could get hung up on. So that was one of the things. Another thing is medicine really respects hard work. I feel a lot of brand, uh, fields just want talent. 
medicine in one place where you can be little lacking on the talent aspect but if you make it up with your hard work it really respects and rewards it which is like an easy way to go about it just be passionate just be consistent and i think medicine rewards everybody so that was one of those things secondly i can't tell you like i i think people find it difficult to believe but mbbs is so much fun i don't think it, i i mean i have friends who are engineers i of course i come from a place of bias but it is too much fun it is too much fun every single person that exists in medical college is so much fun so of course i am saying points apart from it being a profession of course in the times of covid we've seen how much of healthcare system uh, is important to us it's crumbling in india but it's very important even the crumbling system is uh, something very important to us but i feel uh, but again only choose medicine if you can't think of something else if you can think okay mai shayad engineer bhi ban sakta hu please become engineer mat bano because this is never ending like literally every time i take an exam i am already thinking of the next exam so there is no end to process so only and only take it if you're passionate because when you are passionate you enjoy it i am i am so happy i had an emerge yesterday emerge means working for over 36 hours continuously and i'm still telling you today that i had the ball of my life doing that emerge so that can only you can only say that if you're passionate so think about it that it's not as difficult as it might sound but it is a lot of uh, effort you will have to miss a few friends birthday parties and family functions but a few eventually in life you will learn how to balance the two and that's one of the biggest lessons i took from mbbs that you can't always give up on your um, happiness or recreation but you need to find a right balance and mbbs teaches you that which is a very good life skill and apart from that the most obvious reason of why you have to choose medicine like uh, they've been li- uh, listed on the slide Doctor Priya, what what are your experiences with um, uh, medicine, and why would you why did you select medicine? So when I chose MBBS as a career, I wasn't sure that I would be able to do it or not. Of course, I honestly didn't have faith that I could do it. But today, five years down, when I look when I look back, I'm like, wow, it's done. You know, the satisfaction that you get from doing this profession. I mean, nothing. You cannot compare it to anything. Of course, like you've mentioned. uh you know even like job satisfaction is unparalleled agreed like if you were interested you know in things like uh, hard work then you should truly go for this if this is your passion that's it there's nothing else that will stop you and like it depends also how well you are trained to you know help other people in the worst situation and to work under pressure you will have to see a lot of life and death but it is all worth every Very challenge good. that you take up it's worth it thank you so much uh so a day as an mbbs professional <laughs> can you please like tell us about a single day in your life what does it look like a single day in our lives so i usually <laughs> wake up at 5 5:30 and i leave for work at 7 in the morning 7:30 max i leave i go in at 8 o'clock i change into my scrubs and start my day it starts by taking all um, the investigations of every single patient seeing every single patient taking overs from my seniors and then starting my day having rounds doing blood collections or say uh, urine cultures etc etc and then going around uh, going with every single consultant on each rounds and seeing what they are doing with their patients and learning from them gaining more experience gaining more knowledge and i wrap up by 5:36 they come back home usually ex- extremely tiring days but if i get the opportunity i do study for a while and when i get an off i'm just studying because you know you need to do it to get into a better position in life because once you are done with it there's nothing going to stop you from enjoying every single thing that you want that is very true very well said priya ji uh, dr fagun shah what about you i think my experience or my day also looks pretty similar to dr priya and uh, you know the, it's a it's a very fascinating thing to see how medical uh, colleges or hospitals work like a clockwork like she said you go the first thing you do is take all the investigations take over from your the shift before 
run all the labs, come back, attach those labs. And at, uh, at the phase that we are in, both of us, we are actually assisting in healthcare. We are not doctors who are actually uh, diagnosing the diseases. And you know those Eureka moments that doc, uh, House MD has, we are not doing that at right this phase. We are doing more of scut work and grunt work. But trust me, even that is too rewarding. And it is so fascinating how everything like, you know, oh, I saw the HB was too elevated and the blood was viscous. So I just took a phlebotomy and he's done. This is a very simple procedure. But the fact that I did it and he's well now, it is, so that's what happens. Like she said, it's very much like a clockwork. But the only place I differ is I will not wait for the enjo enjoyment to come later on. So I've made, so I have to play table tennis every day or I have to go for a run every day. I have to read a book every day because there is no later. As far as I know, after five, six years into this, I don't think there is a later coming. There is always an exam. There's always things that you have to do. So make sure you, I feel, make sure you're enjoying every day. There is no another day like the day before. So don't lose out on today for tomorrow. And always like one of my very trusted seniors taught me, study for one hour every day. Even if you had an exam in the morning, study for one hour. You cannot lose touch with studying. Read uh, scientific reports. So I have made it a habit to read research studies every day, case reports. You need to know what's up and coming in your field. If you have to be abreast with everything that's happening, set aside one hour, even on your chill days, to study and uh, up your knowledge. So adding to this, and adding on to this slide, uh, according to you, what were one of the best experiences, like, like a case that happened? What were one of the best experiences as a as an intern at your respective hospitals? What was one of the best experiences you have? I've had two. One was, uh, so we have something called the COVID OPD. That everybody who has cough, fever, they walk in. We examine them if they have COVID. If they have COVID, we admit them into the COVID wards. So what happened was, uh, the resident thought he had COVID because uh, he was coughing. And he was having a bit of breathlessness. And breathlessness, as we all know by now, is a very big symptom of COVID. But when I took his BP, I realized he was hypotensive. And that, so I was like, it is not adding up over here. Why is he hypotensive in COVID? It's not really a symptom. And then when I thought of it again, I checked his pulse, and etc. I realized, and uh, you know, doing ECG is one of the first investigations we do when people come. So I ran his ECG. And boom, I saw a very nice ST elevation, which is a marker of MI. It is nothing to be happy about if somebody is uh, going under a cardiac arrest. But I was so happy that I... I felt that it was not adding up as COVID. Otherwise, people have just sent him to the COVID world. He would have been there. It would have taken a lot of time. So that was very fascinating, number one. And MI is anyway like a very fascinating thing to manage and diagnose. MI means uh, heart attack, myocardial infarction. And another thing is DK, if you all have heard of it, DK is diabetic ketoacidosis. It, it is such a dramatic presentation, but all it requires is one injection and the patient starts stabilizing. So I just love the effect it has. Like, I just I feel so powerful in that moment that one injection and I know it's going to be okay. If I do it at the right time and the right way. So these are really good experiences. Like I, these are my favorite diseases, so as to say. Dr. Priya? So we have had a case in our ICU since over a month. Uh, this person, uh, he came in with uh, bleeding in his uh, brain and uh, they did the surgery for him, post which during the surgery, he vomited <laughs> and he went into something known as aspirational pneumonia oh. and he could not be saved. After the bleeding in his brain, after aspirational pneumonia, he got intubated for the same and, and was on the ventilator. Two weeks down the line, we realized there's a swelling in his brain. There was a CT performed and later we had to do a decompressive craniotomy on him. Nobody thought that he would survive, but one month later today, he is able to walk. He's able oh, wow. to walk. And he's able to do every single thing thanks to physiotherapy <laughs> and all the medications. Everything was done for him. He had every single disease possible. I think my entire internal medicine as a subject <laughs> came in at one patient. It was so fascinating to see how it was a miracle to see how he came from what and he's become what now. Like that was very interesting. That's from one month, that's the case. That's the most interesting case that I have seen. <laughs> 
That's so very interesting. I can't even imagine like every single day must be very exciting for you. Even though it's, I heard your hours every day. It's quite hectic, but every single mm-hmm. day must be so exciting. New things every single day. Amazing, seriously. So, brushing up on what comes after MBBS. Uh, a lot of it was covered in during the session itself. But is there anything else you would like to add on that? Uh, about the FMG exam, I could speak something for those who are planning to pursue MBBS abroad and then maybe come down to India for working or uh, studying further in India. So the FMG exam, formerly known as the Foreign Medical Graduate Exam, is an exam that students take after completing five years of their MBBS course. So if you do it from China, the course is five years of MBBS plus one year of internship. If you do it from Russia or Mauritius, the course is six years of only studying and one year of internship, which you do after completing your FMG exam in India. Even same, I believe, same goes for Philippines and uh, Georgia. So um, according to the new rules of the NMC, which is now, known, which was formerly known as the Medical Council of India, situated in Delhi, they organize an exam with the NVE board, which is the National Board of Examinees, and they conduct this exam twice a year, one in June and one in December. So you can take the exam anytime in uh, June or December. And currently, the guidelines state that you have only three attempts of clearing the exam. If you cannot clear it in three attempts, you're not eligible to work in India or obtain a license in India. Earlier, in 2020, The attempts were, you could give many number of attempts and uh, the age criteria for it is up to 35 years, beyond which you cannot even sit for the exam. So this exam basically consists of two parts, two and a half hours each. And uh, the first part of the exam, which happens in the morning from 9 to 11, they uh, are consisted of the, of the uh, preclinical subjects, which is your first three years subjects of MBBS and the second part of the exam are the clinical subjects, which are the fourth and the fifth year of your MBBS subjects. So cumulative in both, you need to get at least 75, 75 marks each, which is an average of 150 marks to gain a license in India. And uh, if you plan to pursue your career in India, like supposing post MBBS and post FMG, you want to sit for the NEET PG, your minimum marks in the FMGE exam should be 165 to even be eligible for AIMS, PG or NEET PG. So that's the new rules and the new guidelines. Great, great. Anything else you would like to add, Dr. Fabenshman? I feel there are too many seniors and too many peers to tell you about all of this. Because I'll tell you why I'm saying this. Right now, we're talking about NEET PG. Uska bhi next ho hai. We're talking about lab. Uska UK MLA ho hai. So things keep changing every minute, every second. And I like uh, as a broad stroke, I say, sab mein potential hai. If you think about pros and cons, UK will give you citizenship. US MLA will not give you citizenship because we know what Biden and Trump have been doing. They just want to drive you up. So after spending so many years in that country, you will still be paying taxes more than the residents and you will not have a, a, a citizenship. UK will give you that. Uh, US MLA, I mean, US will give you a lot of money. You will be minting money right from the first year. Uh, UK may maybe not. You will have a decent standard of living. You will not mint money. Uh, NEET PG, if you have the capacity after doing your MBBS ki kura or struggle karna hai, to for NEET PG karo. Or lakta hai ki you have it, you to take two, three more entrance exams and do it. But the thing is, these things might not even remain the same after uh, you all graduate. I'm, even if the current 12 standard, it's too soon for them to decide. In my first year, I wanted to do NEET. Second year, I wanted to do MLE. Third year, NEET. Again, fourth year, PLAT. And finally, in internship, I took PLAT. So these things can't be thought of right now. But trust me, there is potential everywhere. MBBS karlo, achhe se karo, enjoy karo. Nothing is going to stop you from, you know, touching the stars. Great, amazing. I agree to what Dr. Fagun said. Like, because currently, Maybe from the year 2022 or 23, whenever the government of India decides, they will combine the NEET PG and the FMG exam, which gives mm. scope to both the students from abroad and India. So that totally increases competition also. Mm. 
and the way your approach to studying MBBS and the exams comes to. So that is like many years for you all. <laughs> That's like almost five to eight years from now. So career options for you all uh, who want to study later MBBS, uh, I mean, later PG abroad, everything will change with time. So nothing stays constant as they say. Very well. So touching up on the myths, uh-huh. like, this is a very big thing. So, I yeah. <laughs> and so does Dr. Priya. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> these, are the exact, these are the exact myths of MBBS or med school or your PG or your super speciality that students study 24-7, which is a big, big, big lie. Okay. <laughs> And that you will be super rich. I think if you work in India, you are not going to be rich till you're 40. And once you're 40, then you will be paying student loans. And there are easier way to get rich. If you want to get rich, now don't go into And then you will be paying for every single loan that you've taken. <laughs> um, uh, what med school is strict and boring? I don't think it's strict and I don't think it's boring. The amount of fun that I had in MBBS, I've not had anywhere else. I've taken so and I many trips. Sorry to interrupt, but I was like, no, no. Dr. Priya and I have been repeating this again and again that the amount of fun we've had during our respective MBBS years is unparalleled. True. And and, uh, and uh, I think somebody said it's super strict and boring. Even if it's strict, I think by the end of five years, you you become so smart that you will find a way to you know to fool your teacher, and which is necessary sometimes. Like in if they are too strict, you will become smart to fool the system and get your way done. So don't worry too much about those things. Study 24 7. If I tell you about my last one week, I've had a ticket tournament. I've gone out twice for dinner. We had a sari day today. We had a photo session the day before. And all the while, I was working and I was studying. So, boring to bilkul bhi nahi, or studying 24 7 to bilkul bhi nahi. To wo to hai nahi hai. Pata nahi kaha se me kaha hai. And uh, this one, I like this one also. The doctors marry doctors. <laughs> <laughs> not unless you are very interested in a doctor that you meet in your college i think people marry people they love sure. now if they have otherwise to doctors, no first surrounded by doctors true 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 and life is set up for mbbs <laughs> be it mbbs or be it any career life is never set your job needs to give you satisfaction and that's what will bring your life to a settlement what, I don't understand what you mean by set. Nobody is ever set in life, personally. I, I can say it. <laughs> and we are not like, you know, ice cream ki jama hai. Like, set matlab kya? Set. There is nothing called set. And you, you should always strive to be better. What is said, you can't stop after some, any point. Why? Like, till you die, you need to get better. So I don't think there is any point chasing that set life or anything. Just take it as it comes. Take each day as it comes. True. And there's always scope and room for improvement in MBBS or any career that you choose, you know, and set goals according to the days, not according to years or decades. MBBS students don't have any social life. Well, I we think Dr. Told you. And I have <laughs> very good social life. I think I have better social life than quite many people around me. <laughs> And we are very sensible social. Like, you know, it's not a mindless party. Of course, there is party, but there's mindful party. You know, like I said, sleep more than you study, study more than you party, and party as much as you can. So if you have this funda set, you know, so then you have your priorities in check. That's it. Social life, so we've done everything that our people who are not, our peers who are not from MBBS do. So do not think you're going to miss out on anything. And somebody said, all MBBS students are intelligent. All MBBS students are hardworking for sure. Might yes. might not be intelligent, and hard work can always compensate for uh, talent. So, uh, seniors do not rank juniors. Seniors make sure juniors have the best time in MBBS. Seniors make sure you all are always uh, directed in the right uh, path. Seniors give you the best advice. Seniors give you their books so that you don't have to spend. Seniors give you parties. Seniors, seniors are very helpful. Tips. <laughs> Seniors don't allow you to pay. Seniors don't allow you to pay. Never. (laughs) The seniors are amazing. So if you have senior friends, you're sorted through your MBBS life because you're not going to pay. And MBBS is a very close-knit fraternity, you know. So if 
everybody knows everybody and everybody helps you will never find a more helpful community than nbbs because i have spoken to people i've never met or i just said okay i i like to know more about what you're doing in life or how to go about plan without knowing them and invariably they've always been very helpful and i do the same like when it comes to medicine anybody who comes to me i feel are you to matlab ye apna ek community hai so i think and i've not seen this elsewhere to be very honest so i think not at all ragging wagging kuch nahi hai you're not smart enough that's why you chose mbbs abroad well i personally have got this question many many times and statement which is uh, clearly not a good statement to tell any student who is studying anything abroad or india it really doesn't matter and even like even for those students who might get admission into bds or homeopathy ayurvedic yeah yeah for instance it's not because you were not smart enough you could not get mbbs it's just because personally if you if i quote it's because of the system that we have in india that does not allow people like us who are from general category to get enough admissions because of the quota system in our country that's the reason we don't get admission here <laughs> and after hearing you speak today i feel if you're passionate uh, enough that's why you chose mbbs abroad it's not about the smartness over here it's more about the passion and i don't know why does this hierarchy exist in india where mbbs nahi mila to dentistry lenge dentistry nahi mila to physiotherapy lenge if you're physiotherapy. passionate about physiotherapy please do not take an mbbs seat even if you're getting it i think a passion should take precedence over kya mil raha hai what is expected of you what what looks nicer what looks more respectable do not fall into those traps racial discrimination if you study abroad this is a very wrong statement uh from my experience and what my friends also who have studied from different countries have told me that if you go abroad the people are so helpful you don't know their language they will help you you don't know a place they will guide you you don't know how to speak they will they will translate everything for you and help you they have been the most helpful people that have come across in 5 years uh for example my chinese is really not that great i tried very hard to study i did i cleared exams in chinese but i always had people who helped me to understand the language better for example even like uh, when you study mbbs uh, in china we have our uh, our hospital notes and our hospital documentation all in mandarin it's quite difficult but the teachers who know english they will always help you and understand it better patient communication they will help you they will help you to read records they will help you in every single thing so racial discrimination is definitely not when you study anywhere and the last uh, fear of not being as good as an indian medical graduate so initially in my uh, initial years of college i thought i thought or that i not be as good or as smart i not be as good as or smart as an indian graduate but i think when i came down to india and when i started my internship in january uh, january 8 i just realized like we all are sailing in the same boat we equal there's nothing like she's smarter or he's smarter and i am a, i'm from abroad so i will not get that attention mm-hmm. or there's something we can teach them and something mm-hmm. that they will need all very uh stephy if you can please mute yourself it will be very helpful stephy please mute yourself yeah thank you now <laughs> so thank for those clarification on those myths because when i was pursuing need myself i had a lot of these myths inside my mind as well of course they got resolved later on but i mean these students they are still from 8th grade to 12th grade right? so they need all the help that they can get so as we move towards end so the questions uh, i believe there were a few questions pehle se uh, there was this one question that uh, इंटर्नशिप criteria and 
what you need to do if you want to get into humanitarian services and we also have courses that they offer not only in india but also in other countries like uh, public health service uh, i believe that's a course that you even have here like psm like dr fagun said psm so while applying for such courses and doing such courses you get upper hand to work in the un and it depends on your cv and the amount of work that you have done how much social service that you have already done before all of that counts if you have done more social service than another person who has only maybe say a few years lesser experience then you still have an upper hand to do work in un and serve the country or in the world in all hard times i feel if you have if you want a more structured uh, way of getting into the unicef or one of those big um, one of those uh, who sister sister organizations i feel like she said do mph mph is masters in public health incredibly mm -hmm. difficult to put in the uk and us but harvard has this amazing course do that it it adds so many points to your cv and it can be done uh, via correspondence also right of course you can only do it after your mbbs but do yes. one of those uh, uh, imperial college london offers those courses harvard college offers those incredible courses do that after uh, mbbs during mbbs like priya said there are these internships they offer to undergrads also so do yes. one of those yes. go there for uh, it's it's uh, they have an option one month to four months sort of a flexible situation is there of course it's not paid you have to shell out the money from your pocket that's why i yes. dropped it i want to do that but i i i didn't think it was worth the money i would be spending so but if you can uh, do that and if you're really passionate do that and apart from that there's something called msf which translates into uh, doctors without borders so right yes, after yes. MPH, do that do your mph and if you've done even one internship in your undergrad from who trust me you are going into unicef for sure so itna kar liya na structured approach mein to ho gaya does a new language does a, a learning a new language help of course it has a upper hand of course learning a new language will always help you wherever you go in the world for example in the world you have indians throughout hindi aata hai chal jayega you have a lot of chinese people across the world you know mandarin it will help you french french is a very upcoming language i think many people in school also learn french and that's an option that's given by schools in icsc itself you know like your third language or something like that they do give options to learn so learning a new language is always helpful like for example now doing my internship over here in india i don't know how to speak marathi but learning marathi and the whole experience of learning it it's interesting so it's going to help me later on in life i know it today i might not know how to speak but maybe a year later i will know how to speak fluent marathi so even if you stay over here yes 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 dr fagun and if you even if you uh, read before that one half of our hemisphere is uh, language dominant so and you know most of the times when you are learning new things suppose when i'm always doing math or medicine one part of my hemisphere is activated when i'm learning a language which is new which requires me to build connections from scratch it always helps my iq in general so learning never be afraid of learning things in fact take it heads on when it comes to language you don't know how much of you know those uh, brownie points it gives you in your iq and how much smarter you become like things like juggling also make you so much more connected like your two hemisphere are so well connected every time you learn a new thing and language is a very big help in life for you as a person for your brain to be healthy so these are obviously add ons these are always very good things to do i um, think uh, i'd like to give a disclaimer here whatever i knew about genetics i have already said that if priya you have to add you said because no, we are getting no. a lot of genetics questions genetics and questions. i don't know what exam what college what degree i don't know I I have not much idea on genetics. If you want to know about genetics, I think there's an a girl from Bundesha itself. She's also part of the alumni, Uja Pare. She's done her biotechnology, and uh, currently she's working with Kokila Ben, and she's pursuing going to pursue oh, wow. college in Germany in cancer research. So I think she would be a better person to tell you about genetics and bio uh, biotechnology in general, because I don't think. <laughs> we are the right people to answer in her forte and uh, dr fagun i think this question is for you do you uh, do you need regular motivation and encouragement during your preparation for neat and i think 100% and how is and why is cv building necessary uh, so the preparation for neat lasts for two years 11th and 12th you can falter at any given point and it does demand a lot 
So I had a counselor. If somebody is interested, just DM me on Instagram. I'll give you the details. So he kept a check on me when it came to. He was not like a teacher. He had he's an uh, IIT alumni. He was just keeping a track of, am I doing okay? Basically, am I studying? Am I happy? Am I taking care of myself? Am I going off track? And he was very expensive. He took a lot of money from me to be very honest. But I feel he had a big part to play when it came to my score. So motivation, encourage your parents will also have to be always there for you because you are always studying. You are always focused on this one thing. So other things around you have to be taken care of. So encourage and encouragement and motivation in the form of support, help, love is always necessary. Seek it out, and anybody who is deterring you away from your focus, please talk them out. Those people. I tell you how and why CV building is necessary. Like I said, mm-hmm. first thing I wanted to do me, then MLE. Now suddenly when I decide MLE, I have a blank CV. So don't do that. From the first day, assume that you might want to go abroad and build on your CV, and it's no harm. It is too much fun. For CV, what you have to do is. Leadership qualities, research uh, experience, UIP audits, uh, some bit of social service, uh, extra curriculars like you know running a marathon, playing table tennis, swimming, playing any other racket sport. So, if you have these, do not stress about it. But why do you want to be a bookworm when you can be doing so many other things and be studying? And like I said, if you change your mind later on and you want to go abroad, abroad may CV is necessary. Kind of things start from CV, exams come later on. Yes, so CV I. First day. And, and for those, does make you a star in the college also to be very honest. Put up with extra first day, make a Kia na, so you become a star. Uh, correct. Uh, and for those students who plan to do MBBS abroad in the future, so CV helps you because, like for example, like uh, when you are doing MBBS, you get vacations. You get two months of summer break. In July and August, so your colleges give you the opportunity to intern. which is known as an observership to do in your country and you can apply to different colleges they take you for a two month period it's where you get to learn get to understand how a hospital runs and what type of patients come in the hospital you can work from anywhere i when i was in my mbbs i did only one rotation of an observership at safi hospital which is in cherny road i did it over there and that helped me build up a cv because you get to learn a lot and small little things like these do help in the future all right uh, i think there's someone unmuted please mute yourself uh, hemlata has raised her hand over here uh, okay. i think she would like to ask a question yeah i would like to ask one question in fact two it is so uh, it is in which year do you have to select a specialization once you are in medicine which year uh, you need to select specialization after mbbs after mbbs yeah yeah and another thing is uh, like yeah. looking, looking at the courses now which you think would be in demand five years yeah three years down the line like for these set of batches which one apart from the conventional courses like uh, you know somebody with a surgeon ent i understand mm-hmm. it with the choice but something which is uh, you know a kind which is in demand or like you find there is a niche for this particular course so which one do, would you all recommend as such i think uh, one that is up and coming like one which was not in demand before and is in exponential demand now is psychiatry uh, yes okay get it that to awareness how aware we are how horrible lives we live and the okay. times i think psychiatry is up and coming if you're interested another thing uh, i feel is like all of you all once you get into medicine try learning to code i am an amateur coder who keeps trying to do it here and there because i think that is the future be it radiology you see doctors can never be replaced even if you have the best of systems you will need a doctor but the doctor needs to know how to operate with those uh, systems and new technology so ai ml those are those things are the future it will start from radiology it will come over there so if you are an aspiring radiologist please get your hands on learning how to code basic coding ki samajh mein aayega ki algorithm kya likha hai when it comes to surgery there is machines called da vinci and all that which we have yeah. in our colleges outstanding machines but if you don't understand how it operates oh, or no. why it does what it does how can you use it to your advantage as a doctor you are supposed to be using the machines not the other way around so you need to know <laughs> what goes inside so basically Uh, these things have a lot of potential which go well with ai and ml like i said radiology has a i feel radiology is only going to go up from now psych is only going to okay. go up internal medicine is something which will never go out of flavor because mm. everybody has 
diabetes, hypertension, etc., etc., all those long-lasting comorbidities. So I think these are around to stay. Even like okay. now, seeing the pandemic situation and how many doctors we need right now in our country, and honestly, the way we are lacking so many doctors in our country, the ratio in our country, I believe, is one is to twenty or thirty thousand probably, versus what we have in abroad, like the US and the UK. So something like emergency medicine or critical care medicine in the times of COVID is very very necessary these days in our at least in our country setup where we have honestly a failing medical system. Okay. So these courses are compulsory. Okay. Okay. It's not another uh, as such like oh no you have to do you have to do. yeah. Okay. So I had another one, uh, you know, now uh, as like many of, uh, like I think in US also, the like, you know, they are moving from allopathic to naturopathic. So uh, what is the, the combination you all would suggest, like if somebody takes into allopathic, because now what has been a trend, like more people want to be, uh, you know, uh, wherein the healing happens by themselves, rather than uh, like, you know, being dependent on a medicine kind of thing. So what, have... what would you all have yeah. a say on this? So first of all, there is no such thing as allopathy, okay? Allopathy means other. It is not other. What we practice is called modern medicine, which is evidence-based. So, okay. and it, it always has to be a holistic approach. Uh, there are things Ayurveda cannot do and will not be able to do, whatever it does. Okay. There are things hmm. which only medicine can do. From what I think and I believe, I think homeopathy is pseudoscience. If you look it up on yeah. Wikipedia, pseudo means fake. If you look it up on Wikipedia, homeopathy is a pseudoscience. I give a lot of credit to things like homeopathy. Mm. When, you, when I think of holistic uh, approach to a healing, I think of physiotherapy, I think of occupational therapy, to an extent Ayurveda and MBTS. These things can come together for the betterment. But I do not think, see, homeopathy or Ayurveda can be a way of life. It cannot be a way of treating medicines or it cannot be a do, way of doing appendicectomy that only a surgeon with a scalpel in his mm -hmm. hand can do. So I, 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 this is a very... I don't know, it's a fad that's come up that everybody wants to think like that, but it is not a correct way of thinking in my opinion. Okay. Uh, there's this question that's been coming a lot. How is ISC or Bundecha Junior College as a perspective of NEET and the ideal grade, which is the ideal grade for starting NEET PG? Okay, so ISC as such, uh, I did it uh, because I didn't want to honestly start study in SSC or HSC that they say. I did it because it, honest, it gives an upper hand in your education and at par with CBSC board, but considering how the need situation is, it's best to do CBSC, but even if you do IC, ISC in 11, like 11th and 12th, there is no harm as such. And which is the ideal grade for start preparing need, for preparing for need, uh, need uh, UG, which would be probably starting off your 11th. You know your concept, you read your books, and like Dr. Fagan already mentioned, NCERT books are the main goal and the main stay for cracking the examination. And uh, Dr. Fagan, you throw some light on how and when. So I see, I haven't had any experience of I, for need. but I do think CBS is the best way to go about it. As long as there is need, I think, of course, IC cannot be bad, but I'm just saying what is the best, I feel it's CBSC. And grade 11 standard, The I think yeah. by the end, you get a good break after your board examination. Figure out your mind, figure out your coaching classes, what you want to do, are you sure about medicine? Once you are sure, start studying. So I think 11th, beginning of 11th is a very good time to start studying. I really like Ananya's question because that's what I want to do, interventional cardiology. Yeah, it is taking over because of the ease, because and not just ease for your patient, ease for the doctor. Both the ways yeah. is ease. And interventional anything. And you know what's funny? Every other field, like be it uh, nephrology, neurology, every other field, the interventional aspect is taken up by radiology. Only interventional cardiology is still in the hands of the cardiologist. So if you want to, uh, if you want to do any other intervention, you need to go via the radiologist route. But if you want to do intervention in cardiology, like stenting and all of that, you become a cardiologist and definitely it is going to take over because of how minimally invasive it is. I'm actually interested in surgery, so it's out of question in the future. That is what I'd like to ask. I don't think so at all because, you know, you like I said, we need people to man the machines. So surgery can never go uh, out of vogue.
and if you've seen surgeries everybody is very different you can uh, you know you can program your machine to work a certain way we've seen so many times with appendix maybe it's supposed to be say whatever centimeters but it can be one or two centimeters up and down we will uh, manipulate the uh, machine and make it cater to that uh, specialized sort of organ so i don't think it's ever nothing is going to go away as far as i am as far as what i have read and my knowledge is concerned no branch is going to be redundant or obsolete any time uh, in the future thank you shloka yes. over here has raised her hand uh, would you like to ask your question and you to yourself okay oh yeah i had a question here i wanted to know about the non clinical courses or options in medicine because what i, I could hear her can you speak a little louder okay i think there's some issue with my microphone i'm sorry okay i did not know the non clinical uh, option and courses in medicine because what i want to do is medicine only that couldn't be a better subject other than medicine that i can graduate in but what i fear about is the clinical aspect of it so i wanted to do something in the non clinical part so but i have no idea about that okay so uh, like when if you plan to get into mbbs in mbbs like you already mentioned both of us have already mentioned that you have something in your first three years that are known as paraclinical subjects and fourth and fifth year consists of clinical subjects so paraclinical subjects if you like them it gives you a upper hand later on in life to specialize in those again for those specializations you will have to take the neat pg or plan or us family mrcp etc etc but you can do research work in that and uh, it will help you because the subjects are like microbiology which is studying about different kind of organisms like virus bacteria fungi you have pathology which could help you in something like cancer research you have uh, anatomy anatomy is basically studying about the entire body and like dr fakun said in her opening statement about dissecting the body so that gives you an opportunity to become a medical uh, professor then you have some options like medical legal advisor so like yeah, any yeah. case murder <laughs> for instance um, you can be called in for the medical legal if you all remember the sheena bora of case how a so and so person uh, yeah sheena bora case if anybody remembers that was investigated at nair and gj very yeah. cool interesting it is a mixture of anatomy and forensic medicine true Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I wanted to know what do you meant on doing an MHA or an MBA from maybe states or Canada after doing MBBS? I, I sorry, I didn't understand. Ah, uh, doing MHA that is basically MBA in hospital administration. Yeah. It's completely ah. Uh, ah, uh, it comes under commerce thing. It's not basically commerce, I believe, because. Uh, But yeah, of course, it's only the doctors doing it. Not only doctors that do it. There are a lot of other uh, fields that uh, help you also get into hospital management. But if you're already someone who has worked in a hospital setup, you know the healthcare system better than someone else. And hospital management would help you, like when you work as an admin, it would just help you to enhance hospital credibility. in hospital uh in hospital management also you have careers of becoming something like uh, an organ uh, organ transplant manager so there is a there is a, an organization that helps in organ transplant uh, then you can become a blood bank administrator or medical superintendent there are many options that come into hospital management and hospital administration and good places to do it is uk uk is one of the very good places to do hospital administration it is uh, i have a lot of people who want in hospital administration from uk itself and dr pavan would you want to say something on that i i don't think i have much to add on this okay thank you thank you and it is called is that uh, only the mbbs graduates can do it or even bbs and the bms people are doing it yes even they can do it I have people currently at Nanavati who are BDS graduates and they have done hospital administration. So basically, so if you want to the that, uh, you have done after MBBS you are doing it or after BDS you are doing it, does it really matter? 
No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because it's a balance of both commerce and science that you do. <laughs> so I don't I don't think it will matter. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, Asmi uh, Nagreja has a question. She has raised her hand. Please, you'll be on mute yourself, Asmi. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, I can't see people losing their lives and like people suffering. So most of the people around me are suggesting that medical won't be a good profession for me. So what are your thoughts on it? Oh. <laughs> I think uh, people around you are right. See, there's a part, yeah. some part of me hardened after coming into MBBS. I'm mm -hmm. not saying I was all hardened up and all uh, equipped to handle death uh, before I entered MBBS. But if you are extremely empathetic, extremely sensitive, maybe don't get into this. Why do you want to torment yourself like that? So that is one part of it. And... Uh, yeah, I think uh, because this will become a part of your life. Every day, like, imagine the first thing that we do when somebody dies is not moan or feel sad. We like, okay, let's do flat line. Dekhna hai. Correct. So Correct. you have to be that objective and practical. Okay, let's do this flat line. Let's do this more. Mein ye karna hai. You know, I think after a point, you need to... There is some level of detachment that is required. Of course, all of us fall at some point. We also start crying sometimes. Those days do happen. But you can't afford to... Uh, torment yourself like that on a daily basis. Honestly, you can't keep your, you can't, you know, have so many emotions and attachments for everybody. I know it, in the start, it feels really sad. I remember uh, when I did my observership at Sefi, uh, we had to declare a patient brain dead. I couldn't do it. My first time, I couldn't do it. I cried. <laughs> But then over three years, I've learned how to deal with it. Sometimes you need to keep your emotions close to yourself and keep that aside and deal with your patients at a regular basis. Because if you have a lot of emotional attachment, it's definitely going to be very, very hard for you. And it doesn't even make you as good a doctor. I think some level of detachment makes you a better doctor or a better professional, healthcare professional, I think. Got it. Thank you so much. Welcome. So we have... Uh, yeah. Shlok Jamani has a question. Uh, yes, I just want to know what are these paramedical courses? I've heard a lot about it. Like uh, any information about paramedical courses and whether there's any entrance exam for them. So uh, some of the paramedical courses, like uh, if you're counting physiotherapy, dentistry, uh, those come with me. Uh, there are paramedical courses like uh, speech therapy, audio therapy, radio, uh, radio technician. Uh, anesthesia technician these uh, go via uh, board examinations course and uh, I think that's all I know about it mm. I believe Niyati has a question uh, uh, she has yeah. raised so like I've heard from the people like if we study abroad if we study MBBS or something of medicine like it is not applicable when we come to India so like is it a myth or is it true it's a myth so we have, I, I like I already explained, we have a council, which is now known um, as the National Medical Council of India. You go on their webpage, they were formerly known as the Medical Council of India. You go on the webpage and they have a list of hospitals and a list of colleges that offer you MBBS abroad. You see them, you go online, you apply for the college. And then once you're done with your MBBS in so-and-so college, you come back and give the FMG examination. And that's how you're going to get a license to practice in the country. Without that examination, you cannot practice in India. Oh. It's always a better and a backup, always better and a backup option to keep your life, keep the your country's license in hand. Because supposing, for example, something happens in abroad and uh, you are sadly remove from a job or something, something, anything could happen. Then when you come back, at least you have your license in hand with you to work in your country, at least, if not elsewhere. At least keep the license of your country, even if you study anywhere else. Thank you. There was one more question that I received uh, on personal. Uh, it says, should I go for an MBBS even if it costs me tens of lakhs, which is better to invest in MBBS or MD? You can't do MD without doing MBBS, okay? So, it one leads to the another. And see, I have also thought about this multiple times. I feel if you have a doctor background, suppose somebody like me who doesn't come from a doctor family, 
imagine I pay 10 lakhs every year for my medicine. So, but I pay twice as much, 10 times as much amount for my MD. Then I pay to set up my own clinic. It's a whole cascade. It doesn't stop at this. So I feel I, I don't, when you have a doctor background or setup, you don't have to spend up in setting up uh, after you are done studying. So see, like a lot of uh, people who go to private clubs and dean are those who come from doctor families because for them, it's worthy investment because they can air. Their child is an heir to their uh, clinic for hospital and they've already made an investment. So a few lakhs here and there doesn't matter. From people like, for people like me, it's not a worthy investment. So it's like a personal call over here. Imagine you're paying 80,000 per annum for a government college and any, anywhere between 8 to 15 for a private college. If you think what they're giving you is worth, go ahead by all means. And even if you plan to study abroad, the cost for uh, many colleges abroad is approximately 5 lakhs a year. This is Which excluding is 5 lakhs a year is a good enough amount to spend if you want to do MBBS, like if you are very passionate about it. And uh, this is excluding your Rene Khane Pine Ka Khar. Yeah. and colleges abroad also offer you colleges abroad also offer you scholarships so like for example i've got scholarship twice in my mbs career and scholarships which are worth maybe one or two lakh rupees starting that's the starting uh, amount that you get and then it goes down to fifty thousand rupees so it helps you pay some amount of your fees or even helps you use that amount for say booking a flight ticket <laughs> or maybe you know using that amount to spend on yourself or saving it also uh, there was one more question over here what are the soft skills that prove to be priceless in this field oh wow who asked this okay. it was one of the questions that question, I received I uh, what are the question? yeah yeah what are the soft skills that prove to be priceless in this field Oh, that's interesting. Who asked this question? That was actually me. So oh, wow. Probably actually it's party. I one that comes to my mind the first is the ability to learn over and over again. Yes. Uh, another thing would be interpersonal relationships. To, uh, to give your services to a patient, you need to first extract from them what is their problem. A lot of times they just go on saying the same thing, which is very superficial. Pay that, 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 that. But there's always an underlying cause. If you can somehow charm them, talk to them, get things out of them, it makes your job uh, as a uh, healthcare professional very easy. So I think interpersonal relationships, speaking the local language uh, is something that comes invaluable. And another thing, like I said, constantly learning, sharing a sense of curiosity. These things are always necessary. If you're just bored and if you're not intrigued, how are you going to go about learning for the rest of your life? Because like we all know, medicine is a continuous process. It doesn't end. So curiosity and uh, inquisit inquisitiveness is all a necessity, I feel. Even if you're up for challenges, you like challenges and you know, you're know you 100% hardworking and it helps you gain good results in your future. Doesn't matter even if you do MBBS or any other field. I'm not just talking for MBBS. Even though we are talking about MBBS as a subject, honestly, I would just want to say that As long as you're not satisfied with what you do, that career is not right for you. Very true. Very well said. Uh, guys, do you have any other questions for these speakers? I believe they don't. Uh, don't worry. Even if any kind of questions that are there in your mind that come up later, group post and I'll, I'll direct the questions to them as well. And uh, yes. thank you so much for coming in. If there are any more questions, we still have time, by the way. You guys can ask. You guys can unmute yourself. You guys can ask. We if have about know. 15 minutes. <laughs> or maybe more, if anybody wants to extend this. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I guess I'll... Okay, wait a second. I got a few minutes. Can you also post their email IDs? Uh, uh, email. I I would leave my phone number rather. <laughs> okay, okay, we have a question. I'll send it we to have... you. 
We have a question here. Does your UG college matter in the long run? Or do it from any other college? That is not been done. Honestly, nobody asks you from where you study. Even if you do your internship in India or if, you do, if you've done your internship from some other country, nobody's going to ask you from where you study. Your grades also will not matter at the end. After 10 years, nobody's going to ask you. So basically, where you do your UG from does not matter as long as your skills, your knowledge is up to the mark. Exactly. I feel objectively it doesn't matter a lot, but subjectively it does. Uh, or some, somebody from KEM would have seen, say, 10 more patients uh, than somebody from somewhere else. And what you learn from those 10 patients. Now imagine I, I am in the best of the college, but if I don't make the effort to learn, where am I standing? So yeah. you know, these do not matter in a very one plus one way, but as long as you make up for wherever you come from, if you're an okay UG college, best of UG college, just make sure you're making the most of every, every opportunity, then you'd be good. At the end of the day, MBBS, your 19 subjects, for example, that you have, is all about correlation and how much you can remember later on. It's a process that you have to do forever. It's a learning process. They say that you are never a doctor, you are, but you will always remain a student because that is a continuous process. So how much integration you can do in your college years would only help you to uh, come to a better position in life. Any more questions? Guys, I have a question. Because they are right in front of you right now. They hardly get a lot of time from the busy schedules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm incredibly thankful that you guys at least gave us Thank time. So much so help us. And the Sunday was my idea because I took an off today because I knew Sunday would not be, uh, any other day would not be feasible wow. for me. Honestly. But all of you made it. I'm so happy. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, these people also took out two hours of their time. I hope what we said was worth their Sunday evening, that two hours, which is very, yes, very precious. I hope this was better than a Netflix show that you would watch right now on Sunday evening. <laughs> I think you're pushing Definitely. it now. Maybe not that much. <laughs> Thank you so much, participants, uh, most importantly, speakers. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, if the speakers could please wait for a while. So, uh, participants, if you have any other questions, feel free to post it on the group and uh, feel free to leave now. Thank you so much for your participants. <laughs>